When you put everything on the table, when you count all the chips, Denmark has one of the highest salaries in the world, period. And this I mean even after paying taxes. We know that Denmark is one of the richest countries in the world, but let's add to this two facts that fly under the radar in most people's calculations. The first one is that in Denmark, you effectively work less hours than in most other places, especially in the corporate world. And if you doubt me, just go to any Danish office on a first day at 5 p.m. and compare with any other non-Nordic country. And second, in Denmark, and specifically in Copenhagen, you can almost avoid a commute altogether. If you don't live far from your office, like I do, for instance, you can be there in 15 minutes stops. So it's like half an hour of commute in the whole day. When you take these two factors into account and then recalculate your salary per the actual hours worked, so the actual hours that you are need to do something related to your work, gives you a picture that is hard to beat almost anywhere else in the world. But let's take a step back and review the salaries in Denmark as a whole first. And then we get into these two specifics I want to touch on today. The average employee in Denmark earns 43,576 Danish krona per month before taxes. And this is coming straight from the government's own statistics. For reference, this is almost 5,900 euros. And again, like this is before taxes. When you pay taxes and taxes here are very high, you'll end up, for example, in that level of salary with 27,900 krona per month in your pocket. And that's 3,700 euros more or less. I say this is an approximation because of course taxes in Denmark are a labyrinth, but in all cases, like this number will not be that far off. All inclusive, this still makes Danish salaries the highest in the European Union. But again, this is the average. Again, for reference, in Denmark, the floor for your salary, like what you can get for almost any type of job, is very high. So even service level jobs that barely pay the bills in other countries, in Denmark, you can live a pretty good life. And on the flip side, comparatively speaking here, the ceiling for salaries in Denmark is also pretty low, meaning that executives can earn a lot better in other places than they would in Denmark, especially after taxes. But now let's talk about effective salaries in Denmark. And I want to, again, stress that the way I think about salaries, most people don't. And I think it's something that people miss a lot of the picture. So let's get into that. I have made the sheet over here that consolidates the average salary for hundreds of jobs. And the data is straight from the government's statistics agency. I made a video that's going to be linked over here where I go into the specifics of the list and all the different jobs here. And you can even download the sheet yourself for your own reference. But in the meantime, what you need to know as well beyond the hundreds of jobs that you have here is that salaries have been creeping up. This data is from a couple of years ago and now especially highly paid expats, you, you might even see some salaries at this range that is actually very high. Like again, we're talking about the top of the list that is super long, right? So just keep that in mind. So specifically, I have seen a lot of like, again, expats getting salaries that are between 60 and 75,000 Danish krona per month. You also not even being a uh, no, high level manager or anything like that. So that's something to know as well. Okay, and now is when things become a lot more interesting. In this sheet, what you can see here is that I take what the gross salary is, meaning that what the company pays you and then that's before taxes but then add two more variables that again, most people don't consider too much. And that's the actual hours worked and the daily commute. So, and, in, and I think it's critical that you consider this when calculating your salary in the sense that in Denmark specifically, you work a lot less, especially for let's say fancy jobs than you would do in other countries. And this is not always the case, of course, goes from person to person, but overall, I would expect that I would at least work one hour less in Denmark than I would do in almost any other non-Scandinavian country for the same job and at least one hour, probably more. Again, two, three hours potentially, it depends on the country. Again, people don't value this enough, but this is a huge deal. And this is where the work-life balance becomes more concrete. And then as I said, like if you're lucky, for example, speaking mostly for Copenhagen here, you can also have a very short commute. And this, again, if you consider your commute as part of the hours you need to work and or as a time sink or something where you actually need to consider in your calculations, I mean, in my opinion, you should. Again, these variables make how much you actually get as a per hour rate on your salary look a lot better than they would do in other places. And just let me give you two examples, right? So this is a simple case, again, 60,000, this is a good salary, like very good, I would say, in many places, right? So after taxes, if you don't get any expect deal, this is the effective tax rate that you get. And that means that your hourly rate is 214 Danish krona net. That's what you get in your pocket for the hours work. And again, this is the amount of hours that you work in a day, and this is a commute. So if all of a sudden you say, okay, I'm gonna be working 10 hours more, and I'm gonna be work commuting for one hour because I'm far away, you see how the actual net hourly rate goes a lot down. And again, your salary is still the same. My calculation here is that, okay, six is nice, but then what if you get 80,000? And that's, I have 20,000 krona jump is quite a lot. Then of course you need to have a bit of a higher tax, you can put 44 or something like that. 
But then because you got this higher salary, maybe you became a consultant and you need to work 10 hours a day. I need to commute for one and a half hours in a day because you need to go to visit your clients and all that. So now you see, even if you're getting a lot higher salary, like 20,000 more a month, which is a lot of money, your hourly rate, because of the hours you need to work and because of the commute you need to do, is actually lower than it was before. So I think that is pretty crazy. I always do these calculations when I look into my own career. So would I take 5,000 more krona per month? But if that means, again, that I need to commute for, two, for 45 minutes more than I would at the moment, I just need to put all these things in the balance. And I think most people don't. You'll still get, of course, more money in absolute terms with the higher salaries regardless. No doubt about that. So if you're ambitious and you don't care so much about how many hours you work and you want to earn a lot of money, be rich by 35 and so on, okay. But if you're like me, who want to be a present father, run side hustles for the fun of it, and try to 130 different countries and all that you will appreciate this extra time and you can use this as a way to justify your thinking or like this kind of bothering to justify your thinking again i have turned down myself multiple job offers many times on that on paper seemed a lot better than this because it was a lot higher salary but again i didn't want to commute too long or i didn't want to again work a lot longer hours so was it the right career decision i mean time will tell and maybe probably was not, but on the other way, this way of thinking helped me unlock all the potential to all the things that I wanted. And to hear more about how I managed my time and I, how I got to be a present father, run as a hustle, travel so much, check this video over here where I lay out my productivity framework.